Our oceans are turning into acid and we need to discuss why. This video goes out to all the nerds that are not just interested in our oceans, but also the science behind our oceans too. I find this topic really interesting and I think you will too. So if you're ready to learn something new, then come right in, strap yourself in, get your chemistry coat on and let's dive into it. So everyone has heard that global warming and carbon dioxide is heating up our oceans as well as the planet in general. But did you also know that it's basically turning our oceans into acid? That may be a bit dramatic, but it's technically true. Ocean acidification is a process where the ocean becomes more acidic. This occurs when the ocean absorbs carbon dioxide or CO2 from our atmosphere. As the concentration of CO2 in our atmosphere increases, the amount of CO2 that our oceans absorb also increases, which in turn is making our ocean's pH decrease. This is a process of concern because it can have negative impacts on marine life, especially corals and shellfish. Some species may be more vulnerable to others and it's still not clear on how it's going to affect the entire ecosystem. When the ocean absorbs CO2 from the atmosphere, a chemical reaction occurs. This increases the concentration of hydrogen ions in the water. This process reduces the pH of the ocean, causing it to become more acidic. Now if you remember the pH scale from school, you'll remember that the acidity and the alkalinity of a solution is measured on the pH scale. The lower values indicate the acidity of a solution, the pH of 7 is neutral and anything above 7 is classed as an alkaline. The pH of our oceans has approximately decreased by 0.1 units since the start of the Industrial Revolution. And this is all due to the increase of CO2 in our atmosphere. While this may not seem like a significant change, it has a very significant impact on our marine life. Many marine organisms have delicate pH balance requirements and even small changes in pH can affect their ability to grow, reproduce and survive. One of the main concerns about ocean acidification is its impacts on coral reefs. Coral reefs are home to a wide variety of marine life and provide important environmental services such as coastal protection and tourism. However, coral reefs are sensitive to changes in the pH and can be damaged by ocean acidification. Acidification can also affect the ability of shellfish such as oysters and clams to form their shells which can have a negative impact on the fishing industry but obviously on the shellfish themselves. Imagine you're a crab and your shell just starts disintegrating over time with the acidity of the water. That's literally what's happening here. It is difficult to predict exactly how ocean acidification will affect different species and ecosystems, as it's a complex process that interacts with other environmental factors. However, it's clear that it is an important issue that needs to be addressed in order to protect the health of our oceans and the species that depend on it. Scientists are studying ocean acidification around the world, including coral reefs and also open ocean areas. Some areas of the ocean are more vulnerable to ocean acidification than others due to factors such as the rate of CO2 absorption and also the local marine ecosystem. One area of focus for ocean acidification research is the polar regions, which the pH of the ocean is already relatively low and is expected to decrease more quickly due to the cold water's ability to absorb more CO2. Acidification in polar regions can have significant impacts on marine life, including ice-dependent species such as seals, polar bears and certain types of whales. In addition to studying the impacts of acidification on specific marine ecosystems, scientists are also working to understand the broader and ecological and economic consequences of this process. It is not just as simple as the ocean just becoming more acidic. This includes studying the potential impacts on food webs, our overall carbon cycle, and the role the ocean has on regulating Earth's climate. There are many scientists that are studying ocean acidification, and their research covers a wide range of topics. Here is an example of some research on ocean acidification by Dr. Jean-Pierre Gattusio, a marine scientist at the CNRS. This study used computer models to project the future impacts of ocean acidification using different scenarios of CO2 emissions. The author found that the rate and magnitude of acidification will depend on the amount of CO2 that is released into the atmosphere in the coming decades. They also found that limiting CO2 emissions can significantly reduce the negative impacts of acidification on marine ecosystems and the economy. Jean-Pierre is a leading expert in ocean acidification and he's wrote many papers on this topic. You can check out his publications online or at your local library. His research has contributed significantly to our understanding of the impacts of acidification on marine ecosystems and the potential consequences for society. 
So with all the science out the way, what can we actually do about the ocean acidification problem? There are several things that we can do as individuals to help the amount of CO2 that's being released into our atmosphere, which again will slow down the ocean acidification process. One of the main sources of CO2 from our planet is burning fossil fuels for energy. By using less energy, we can reduce the demand for fossil fuels and in turn reduce CO2 emissions. This can be as simple as turning the light off when you leave a room or taking public transportation instead of driving your own car. Another thing we can try and do is invest in renewable energy. Consider switching to suppliers that are using renewable energy sources, such as wind or solar, for your home or for your business. This can help reduce your carbon footprint and also help reduce the amount of fossil fuels we need to use. As individuals, we can also support environmental organisations. If you're able to, donate into charities and organisations that work to protect the environment and reduce CO2 emissions can also be a helpful way to make a difference. If you're interested in finding out my top picks for environmental charities and the work that they're doing, be sure to check out this video next. Another way that we can reduce CO2 emissions is to make sustainable choices. Choosing products that are made with sustainable materials and are also produced in an environmentally friendly way can help reduce our CO2 emissions. And this is an important tip guys, spread the word. Share information about ocean acidification and what individuals can do to reduce their carbon emissions with your friends, your family and your co-workers. The more people that are aware of this problem and are able to take action, the greater the impact would be. In addition to the actions that individuals can take to reduce CO2 emissions, there are also specific things that you can do to help protect our ocean and reduce impacts of acidification. If you're not already a vegetarian or you don't want to swap to a vegetarian or vegan lifestyle, you can make the choice to shop sustainably for your seafood. Choosing seafood that's sustainably caught or farmed can help reduce the demand for overfished species and protect our ocean habitats. But of course, cutting out seafood from your diet altogether will have the biggest impact. You can also support ocean conservation efforts. Donating to or volunteering with organisations that work to help to protect oceans and its wildlife can ensure that the ocean is healthy and we're able to resist the impacts of acidification. Another tip is to use environmentally friendly products. Sun cream and sunscreens have chemicals in them that are very harmful to marine life. So when you go swimming in the sea when you're on holiday, all that sunscreen on your skin just goes straight into the sea. So it's important that we choose products that are environmentally friendly. By choosing products that are free of these chemicals, you can help to protect the ocean and reduce the negative impacts of acidification. This is another topic that I've also made a video on, so if you're wanting to swap to more eco-friendly sustainable products, then you can check out the video here, and I'll link all the good stuff down below too. This is an important one guys, you need to help reduce plastic usage. Single use plastic products such as straws and bags are a big pollutant to our oceans. There are so many different types of plastic that we use at the moment and even if you think that you're disposing of them correctly, a lot of the time it does still end up in the ocean because our waste streams aren't perfect. By using fewer plastic products and disposing of the ones that you do use correctly, you can help minimise the pollution in our oceans. Which leads me to the next point of getting involved with beach cleaning. Cleanups. This is a great way to socialise with the community and do it with friends and family when you're at the beach and it's a great way of removing all the rubbish and debris from the ocean and protecting our marine life. Now this global problem is very overwhelming and you're probably thinking how am I, one person of nearly 8 billion people on this planet, able to make a difference? And I get it, because it seems unfair that we as individuals have been told that we need to make significant changes to our lifestyles, all while these governments and these big organisations are polluting the planet beyond repair. If this is you, then don't fret. I feel like this as well, and I've also made another video on it, so go check that out afterwards. Thanks so much for watching guys, I hope you learnt something here, I didn't know about ocean acidification for a long time and it's really important that we tell people about these sorts of topics. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video.